The G. Heilman Brewing Company of La Crosse, Wisconsin, United States, was a brewery firm that operated from 1858 to 1996. It was ultimately acquired by Strohs, and its independent existence ceased. From 1872 until its acquisition, the brewery bore the family name of its co-founder, brewer Gottlieb Heilmann. Topic. Background In 1858, Gottlieb Heilmann, an immigrant from Württemberg, joined in a business venture with John Gund, an immigrant from Baden. Together, the pair of German expatriates founded the City Brewery in La Crosse, Wisconsin in 1858. The City Brewery produced beer at a modest rate, sticking to just local and regional production. The beer produced at the City Brewery primarily went to local hotels and bars. Because hotels and bars were their primary target, Heilman and Gunn collaborated on the International Hotel, formerly the Augusta Hotel, which the pair bought and rebuilt after a fire in 1862. The hotel provided them additional income. In 1872, however, the pair had a falling out due to several factors, foremost among them being Gunn's desire to expand the brewery and Heilman's desire to stay local. Following the dissolution of the partnership, Gunn bought Heilman's shares of the International Hotel and Heilman bought Gunn's shares of the City Brewery. Gunn went on to found the Gunn Brewing Company whereas Heilman renamed the City Brewery the G. Heilman City Brewery. History Topic. 1872–1920 The G. Heilman Brewery came to exist after the dissolution of the Gund – Heilman partnership in 1872. Still under Heilman's direction, the company remained a local brewery, producing only 3,000 barrels of beer a year for La Crosse and the surrounding community. Heilman died in 1878. Because the company was family held, following Heilman's death, ownership passed on to his widow, Johanna, who was to control the company until their nine year old son, Henry, was ready to take over. Along with her brother in law, who was Johanna's foreman in the brewery, the Heilman Brewery finally started expanding. By 1880, they were producing more than 7,000 barrels of beer. Eventually, Johanna's son in law, Emil T. Muller, joined the family business. The three of them incorporated the company in 1890, calling it the G. Heilman Brewing Company, the name it held until its closing in 1991. Following the death of Henry Heilman, the heir to the company, in 1895, Muller became vice president of the company, behind only Johanna, one of the first female CEOs in the history of the United States. It was also around the time of Henry's death that Heilman began developing their historic old style brand. By 1902, the company was producing around 160,000 barrels of old-style lager. It was also that year that the company voted in a union, the last brewer in La Crosse to do so, allowing the company to expand even further. By 1915, Heilman had expanded to serving over 30 states nationwide. Johanna died in 1917, shortly after reaching 34 distribution states and only three years before Prohibition began in 1920. Topic: 1920 to 1933. Prohibition was signed into law officially on January 17, 1920, making it illegal to produce any beverage with more than half a percent of alcohol. Heilman quickly reorganized, dropping their old-style lager in favor of a new product, New Style Lager, which contained less than one half a percent of alcohol. Heilman also began producing soda beverages and malt tonics. With very little success, the company only sold 20,000 barrels in 1926. The company finally hit success with their production of malt syrup, which they made with the intention of consumers using it in private beer making, thus, Heilman barely made it through prohibition. Gund Brewery, founded after the heilman Gund partnership broke up, was unable to stay afloat during this time. A fire in September 1931 almost ran Heilman out of business, causing upwards of $50,000 in damages. 
The company continued to squeak by until President Franklin D. Roosevelt's Congress modified the 19th Amendment, after which Heilman resumed all beer-making duties. Topic: 1933 to 1987. Following the end of Prohibition, the Heilman family members sold their shares of the company to Paul Davis Company of Chicago in 1933, who incorporated the company as the G. Heilman Brewing Company Incorporated and the new company president signed the very first stocks of Heilman that same year. Throughout the 1930s, the company continued to expand their facilities to accommodate increased production needs. There was a major upgrade in the mid 1930s following the creation of Special Export, Heilman's second house brew. Whereas old style lager was only around 4% alcohol, Special Export was over 6%. There was a brief slowing in production during World War II, when the company was impacted by the rationing going on in the country. It was also during World War II, the company took a different approach to brewing and marketing. Heilman began producing several new labels, none of which were as well done as their previous two labels, Old Style Lager and Special Export. Previously, marketing campaigns stressed the quality of their products, but with the influx of labels, Heilman began focusing on the prices and consumer appeal. The focus away from quality led to a sharp decrease in sales by the end of World War II. Not only did marketing change, but a strike at the La Crosse Brewery in 1948 shut operations down for three months. Roy E. Cum took over as president in 1957. A longtime employee at Heilman, Cum remembered Heilman prior to World War II and wanted to return the company to that position. He developed the strategy that Heilman would follow for the next three decades expand to new markets, increase capacity. Offer vastly different brands to appeal to a wide range of people. While a fire in 1959 caused over $100,000 in damages, and almost derailed Cum's efforts, the company stayed on track. They continued to expand under Cum by purchasing new breweries and labels. Cum also introduced Oktoberfest, a German beer festival, to the La Crosse region to increase the sales of Heilmann beers. The Oktoberfest, La Crosse, Wisconsin celebrations were named Oktoberfest USA and trademarked with the federal government that same year. Between the end of World War II and 1971, Heilman had jumped from 39th in the brewing industry to 15th. It was also in the 1960s that Heilman hired Russell G. Cleary, Cum's son in law. Following Cum's death from stomach cancer in 1971, Cleary took over as president. Building on a strategy begun by his predecessors, Cleary accelerated an acquisition and consolidation effort in the 1970s and early 1980s. Through his efforts, Cleary was able to get Heilman stock traded at the New York Stock Exchange on May 23, 1973. Historic U.S. brewing names that were consolidated into G. Heilman during its final years include Black Label, Blatz, Blitz Weinherd, Drury's, Falls City, Grain Belt, Gluck Brewing, National Bohemian, Olympia, Rainier, Christian Schmidt, Jacob Schmidt, and Weedman. Several of the acquisitions were met with legal issues regarding the Sherman Antitrust Act, limiting monopolization of markets, despite a majority of the industry analysts calling many of Heilman's proposed acquisitions would only intensify, not monopolize, the industry. With such hostility towards Heilman when they tried buying other breweries, the company began expanding into different industries such as baking, snack foods, and mineral water, including a Heilman original, La Croix. The brewing capabilities of Heilman, combined with their supplemental industries, peaked at placed fourth in 1983, behind Anheuser-Busch, The Miller, and Stroh. The company at the time was making over 17 million barrels and was making over $1.3 billion per year. Despite being in the top five in the industry, Heilman's sales went unchanged throughout the mid-1980s, and this was attributed to brutal marketing strategies within the brewing industry and the overall decrease in the sale of beer throughout the 1980s. In 1987, Alan Bond of Australia made moves to take over the company and despite Heilman's best efforts in preventing the takeover, Bond acquired the company in a leveraged buyout, with Cleary able only to negotiate the best possible deal for employees, stockholders, and the city of La Crosse. Topic 
1987 to 1996. Bond, who already controlled the Tui's name and almost 50% of the brewing industry in Australia, hoped to build a worldwide brewing combine. Lacking cash, he financed the acquisition of G. Heilman with junk bonds. The collapse of Bond's financial empire led indirectly to the end of Heilman's existence as an independent brewer. Cleary stayed on as director for an additional two years before finally retiring from the company in 1989. As a direct result of the Allen Bond collapse, the G. Heilman Brewing Company declared bankruptcy in January 1991. The troubled firm sought salvation with an aggressive push into the malt liquor market. In a controversial move, company leadership developed a new brand of malt liquor to be named Power Master. Power Master brand of malt liquor was brewed with an alcohol by volume of 7.4%, significantly higher than existing malt liquor brands. Protesters cited Heilman's distribution and advertising strategies as evidence that the company was targeting the high alcohol beverage toward urban African Americans, especially in Chicago, one of Heilman's core markets. Father Michael Flieger took a leading role in opposing Power Master, helping to organize a threatened boycott of one of Heilman's established malt liquor brands, Colt 45 which, at the time, had an alcohol percentage of 5.6%. The Colt 45 boycott was called off when the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives succeeded, in July 1991, in persuading Heilman to pull the Power Master brand from the market. The private equity firm Hicks, Muse bought G. Heilman in 1994, and sold the company to competitor Stroh Brewery Company two years later. G. Heilman's brewery names and intellectual properties became part of the Pabst Brewing Company, the current owner, when Stroh was split between Pabst and the Miller Brewing Company. Pabst oversees the brewing of several well-known Heilman brands, including Old Style and Special Export, under the G. Heilman name. <laughs> Breweries Throughout Cum and Cleary's tenures as company president and CEO, they went on a campaign of acquisition and consolidations, resulting in Heilman's purchase of 16 breweries through the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. Five of those breweries came with the purchase of the Carling Brewery plants and labels. However, the most breweries under the House of Heilman umbrella at any one time was 13 for a brief period in 1983. Brands Over the course of Heilman's history, and especially during Cum and Cleary's times at the company, there was quite a bit of brand acquisition, totaling around 400 individual labels, falling under over 50 different brands. However, not all brands Heilman bought originated from the companies Heilman bought them from. For example, Tuborg beer originated in the Tuborg Brewery in Denmark but was bought by Carling Brewery and eventually sold to Heilman. Below is a table of selected brands. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Old Style. Old Style was the first brand created by Heilman. Heilman purchased the trademarks for Golden Leaf in 1899, and to complement their lighter beer, the company created the Old Times Lager in 1900. Old Times Lager was changed to Old Style Lager after a lawsuit in 1902, and remained Old Style for the remainder of the brand's life. The company bought the rights to the Old Style label and a grenadier holding a stein, for their advertisements, in 1905. Despite the trademark of the brand, several competitors created beers with similar sounding names, prompting Heilman to add a red triangle to their advertisements in 1914, indicating that anything without the red triangle is not genuine old style brand. Heilman had to discontinue old style lager during Prohibition, opting for a new brand, new style lager, which they sold as a near beer, beer that contains less than 0.5% alcohol. New Style, along with the malt syrups Heilman sold, got the company through Prohibition and Old Style Lager returned. The company continued with the Old Style Lager name for the next decade, changing the name of the brand in 1957 when Cum became president. Instead of being called Old Style Lager, it was rebranded to be just Old Style. 
Throughout Cum and his predecessor's terms as president, the brand was popular throughout Wisconsin, the Chicago metro area, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Michigan, and North Dakota. The brand was so popular in the Chicago area that it became one of the sponsors for the Chicago Cubs. Following the purchase of the brands by Pabst, the old style brand left the La Crosse area in the 1990s and was contract brewed at other locations. However, after an agreement with City Brewing Company, which is located at the old G. Heilman Brewery, the city is once again the sole source of the beer. Topic. King Gambrinus King Gambrinus is a legendary Germanic king and is regarded today as the patron saint and sometimes regarded as the guardian of beer and brewing, making it a prominent figure in the brewing industry. Heilmann is one of the many breweries throughout the world that uses King Gambrinus as their mascot. Pabst Brewing Company is another American brewer to use Gambrinus as their mascot. Heilman's history with King Gambrinus goes back to 1939 when the company purchased a 15 foot, 2,000 pound statue of King Gambrinus from a failing brewery in New Orleans for $100. The statue was placed outside the brewery and remains there even today. The company commissioned a second King Gambrinus statue in the late 1970s, when they contracted Elmer Peterson, a local artist, to create an eight-foot bronze statue. The second statue was finished and installed in front of the G. Heilman corporate headquarters in La Crosse, Y in 1980. It was named, King Gambrinus, Patron Saint and Guardian of Beer, and nicknamed, Gammy by the Heilman employees to avoid confusion with the King Gambrinus statue outside the brewery. The original statue was vandalized in early 2015, so the city brewery replaced the entire statue by September 2016 with an exact replica. Gammy was put in storage after some weather-related damage, but is in the process of being rebronzed to make it more durable. Topic. Today. As of 2016, the former Heilman's flagship brewery in La Crosse is owned and operated by the City Brewing Company. The brewery chose to use the name that the former Heilman's used as its startup name in 1858-1872. City Brewing brews beer and packages bottled tea, soft drinks, and energy drinks. It does not have ownership rights over the intellectual property, including beer brand names, associated with the G. Heilman Brewing Company. However, it is the sole producer of Old Style and has two of their own labels, La Crosse Lager and KUL Light. Topic. World's largest six-pack In 1969, designer Roy Wilson and the G. Heilman Brewing Company constructed a set of metal tanks, holding a total of 22,220 barrels of beer, adjacent to their La Crosse brewery. The tanks were used for inventory storage and were painted in the colors of a six-pack of old style. For publicity purposes, the brewery called the tanks the world's largest six-pack. The tanks continued in use as of 2016 by City Brewing, although the old style logo had been painted over and replaced by vinyl plastic sheaths printed with the colors and packaging style of City's La Crosse Lager. Topic notes. Topic external links. Return of the world's largest six-pack